Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Lance, and I'm the director of viral vector marketing here at Unchain Labs. I will be your moderator, and thank you for joining us today. We'll have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, and to ask questions, all you have to do is click on the Q&A button in the Zoom navigation bar at the top or at the bottom of your screen and type your question. When submitting a question, if you avoid clicking that anonymous button, then we can reach out via email afterwards if we maybe don't get to your question during today's session. Uh, we will get to as many of them as we can, though. And now, I'd like to introduce Alex Shepard, Product Manager for Leprechaun at Unchained Labs. Today, Alex will talk us through how Leprechaun dishes out five critical pieces of info about your crude or pure lentivirus samples. And now, I'll hand it over to Alex. How are you doing today, Alex? Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for the intro. Absolutely. So today, <laughs> so today I'm going to explain to you how Leprechaun can lead you to lentivirus gold. So trying to figure out exactly what's in your lentivirus sample can be like trying to find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Difficult, slow, and leave you wondering if it's even really there. Well, I'm going to introduce to you Unchained Lab's newest solution, Leprechaun, and explain how this can help solve the lentiviral riddle. So in comparison to some other viruses used in cell and gene therapy, lentivirus is highly complex. The presence of both a P24 protein capsid and a VSPG positive lipid membrane, which both encase the nucleic acid, means that there can be lots of different components present in your lentivirus prep. So things such as membrane fragments, free capsid proteins, and immature viral particles can all interfere with the ability to accurately quantify and titer your capsid and payload containing virus, the stuff that you really care about. And all of this makes it difficult to figure out exactly what's in your sample at the different stages of lentivirus production and manufacture. This is accentuated by the fact that most analytical techniques look at only one component of the viral particle, and therefore don't give you any information on the bigger picture as to everything else that's in your sample. This makes it challenging to accurately, accurately assess the effectiveness of your workflow steps because you're only looking at a small piece of the puzzle. The most common technique used for analytical characterization of lentivirus are the P24 ELISA, RTQPCR, and cell transduction assays. However, these all have significant issues. They provide virtually no information on sample aggregation or non-viral contaminants which may be present. And they also offer limited to no information on viral structure. The P24 ELISA focuses exclusively on the P24 capsids and the amount of that protein that's present in your sample. This means that it can overestimate titer in all but the most purest samples due to contamination from soluble P24 and makes it poorly suited to upstream analysis. RTQPCR offers the possibility for sequence specific detection of the gene of interest but can have substantial variability in results, meaning it's unreliable for determining viral titer. Both of these techniques focus on only one component of the lentivirus, and combined with the fact that you have to lyse your sample prior to analysis, it means they can't be multiplexed to provide additional information on viral structure. They are also highly specific for their single contaminant, either so a single component, either P24 capsid or nucleic acid, meaning they provide no information on other particles or contaminants which may be present. Transduction assays, meanwhile, provide valuable functional data, but they're painfully slow and take weeks to get results. So they're not an effective method for getting a quick overview of your lentiviral sample. So wouldn't it be great if there was another solution which could fill in some of these gaps perhaps help you figure out which samples are worth investing the time and resources of the functional transduction assay in so that you can screen out those samples which have very low potential to actually be functional? Well, thankfully there is. I'd like to introduce you to Leprechaun, the lentivirus characterization and title tool from Unchained Labs. Leprechaun is the only system that hunts down viral titer by double checking both the size and the structure of each particle, even in crude samples. 
so you can count up your capsule containing lentivirus and follow leprechaun straight to the titer that you've been looking for without noise from contaminating particles throwing you off. Leprechaun characterizes vectors like lentivirus and exosomes on up to 16 samples at a time. Just add 25 microliters, a maximum of 25 microliters to our loony consumable, load it on leprechaun and sit back and relax whilst it analyzes individual particle size by interferometry and then performs immunofluorescence to provide structural information. The lentivirus loony is pre-coated with highly specific antibodies against VSVG, P24, and the extracellular vesicle markers, the tetraspanins. So you can specifically capture lentivirus and your contaminants of interest from even the crudest samples. Each loony features six VSVG spots, which grab hold of your lentivirus. By counter staining with a fluorescent P24 antibody, you can then see exactly how many of these particles contain the capsid. The VSVG capture spot also collects viral aggregates, allowing for separate quantification. There's no need to worry about interference from soluble P24 biasing your viral titer, as the loony also features separate P24 capture spots. These specifically pull down the soluble form of the protein, separating it from the virally encapsulated P24. And finally, there's also a set of three tetraspanning capture spots on the surface of the loony, which capture non-viral vesicles such as exosomes, which are highly abundant in lentiviral samples, but neglected by other analytical techniques. Once your particle has been captured on your loony, every particle is sized by a single particle interferometry to figure out whether it's the right size for a single viral particle, an aggregate, or a small EV contaminant. In this sample, we can see a large peak at the lower end of the sizing range, which is characteristic of the small EV contaminants. Interestingly, if we look at the size distributions of our virus particles, we can see a separate profile for those that do not contain a capsid with a lower average size than our capsid containing particles. So we can actually split them into two populations based on their sizing. At the upper end of the size range, we can see viral aggregates, which are larger than 130 nanometers. After a gentle fixation and permeabilization to allow access to the capsid, you can add inflorescent antibodies against VSPG, P24, and the tetraspanins to gather structural information about your virus. Leprechaun takes sequential images of the red, green, and blue fluorescent channels and overlays them onto the interferometric sizing channel. It can then analyze, identify every particle and isolate which channels that particle is present in to figure out what size it is and whether it expresses the particular proteins. So in this image, we can see the yellow particles are our capsid containing lentivirus. So here we have co-localization between the green VSVG antibody and the red P24 antibody, resulting in a yellow co-localized particle. In contrast, particles that lack the capsid protein appear green because they're not present in the red channel. By combining the sizing information with the structural information from fluorescent analysis, Leprechaun can separate particles into distinct populations. Our VSVG positive particles over 130 nanometers are counted as aggregates, while particles on our tetraspanning capture spot are shown to have very low co-localization of VSVG and P24. They're, these are therefore classified as non-viral vesicles, such as exosomes. This means that you can be confident that when you're looking at your viral titer, you're only counting those particles that are the correct size, have VSPG on the surface, and P24 internally. Leprechaun can provide lentiviral titers down to five times 10 to the six viral particles per mil, even in crude samples. So you can nail down your lentiviral titer by separating your capsule containing viral particles from your empty viral shells or simultaneously getting information on viral aggregates and whether you have high levels of EV contaminants or soluble P24 contaminants in your sample. 
This can help you identify what your next cleanup step needs to be. Leprechaun gives you a unique insight into what's happening in your sample by not only looking at the P24 composition when defining an antivirus, we can, Leprechaun can give you a clue as to how efficiently your capsid is being packaged into your virus. So in this instance, if we, the total titer of VSVG positive particles is six times 10 to the eight VP per ml. But if we look at the number that actually contain the capsid, it's only 43%. So this indicates that 57% of the, um, of the VSVG positive particles do not contain a capsid. This allows us to compare samples from different harvests to assess whether batches of the viral producing cells are underperforming or if, there's some, or if we need to work harder to remove some of these empty shells from our purification process. Leprechaun can also help you get a handle on your EV contaminants. These particles are a similar size and density to the antivirus and are also membrane bound so they can be hard to remove with standard purification techniques. In this sample, there's actually a higher concentration of EV contaminants than there is, is capsid-containing lentivirus. So again, we can figure out if we can effectively remove these contaminants by then monitoring our downstream processes. And we can also allow us to assess whether these contaminants are having any effect on the performance of your vector. Crucially, Sample prep for leprechaun doesn't require destroying your sample with a lysis buffer, unlike most other techniques. Instead, you can just dilute your sample in our kit provided incubation solution, which is a gentle salt based solution, and load it straight onto your loony. In contrast, if you're running a lysis assay, you have to lyse your sample before analysis. So, to see what effect this is having on your virus, we compare the sample treated with a lysis buffer versus a sample incubated in a leprechaun solution and ran it on leprechaun. So what you can see here is that on the left-hand side, we have our, our sample treated in le leprechaun buffer. We still have a large number of intact lentivirus particles. We can also see we have some EVs present and a small number of aggregates. In contrast, if we look at our ELISA buffer treated sample, there are virtually no particles found on our BSPG capture spot. We've also lost all of the information on EVs and aggregates that we had previously. Interestingly, Leprechaun can see the release of soluble P20 or P24 from inside the virus. So we see a threefold increase in soluble P24 in the ELISA treated sample when that previously encapsulated capsid has been released with the breakdown of the viral particles. So what this means is that you no longer have to break up your sample and destroy your virus just to get a feel for titer and lose out on all of this other cool info that you can get. Leprechaun lets you keep your viral particle whole so you can figure out if there's any other factors that are affecting the stability of your virus. The viral titer dynamic range on Leprechaun is linear down to five times 10 to the six particles per mil, even in crude samples. Here we can see that an R squared close to one is reported when we compare the titer from Leprechaun to the expected titer from a viral sample at different dilutions. What this means is that you can take samples straight from cell harvest and analyze them on Leprechaun without any need for prior concentration. Crude samples generally require a dilution of tenfold in our kit buffer, while purifying products are normally run at a thousandfold dilution or greater essentially meaning that you only need one to two microliters of your valuable lentivirus sample to get a result on a leprechaun. There's no need to worry about reproducibility on leprechaun. Titers are highly reproducible with a CV of 8% across eight replica runs. In this instance, we took the same sample, ran it on eight different loonies from two consumable production batches, and see a CV of low 8%. On top of this, each loony also provides all the technical replicates you need, so you can run your sample once and be done. Our super easy to use analysis software gives you all your results in one go and in one place. With automatic background subtraction, you can be confident that there's no non-specific signal from any of the antibodies interfering with your data. 
Unlike other platforms, there are also new user changeable settings. So you can be confident that you're going to have minimal impact from user variability on your results. With a couple of clicks, you can export your data into an easy to read PDF format to see the detailed breakdown of your sample composition. Leprechaun kits are easy to use with step-by-step -step protocols that deliver you your results in just a matter of hours. The Leprechaun Lentivirus Kit contains everything you need to work out the puzzle of your lentivirus sample, including eight lentivirus loonies to specifically capture your viral particles and your contaminants, all the required buffers, and the fluorescent antibodies needed to check the VSVG is present on your envelope and that the P24 capsid is there inside your virus. The, lenti the Leprechaun Lentivirus Protocol has been fully optimized, so there's no additional work for you to do. There's also no need to run standards every time or to calibrate the instrument. You can just turn your Leprechaun on and get on with it. Leprechaun therefore allows you to suss out viral titer, structure, and whether you've got contaminants present at any stage of your process, from the early upstream steps to the final downstream formulation, without worrying about interference from soluble protein or contaminants. This makes it easy to identify problematic steps of your workflow, which may be impacting the yield or purity of your sample, monitor whether you're effectively removing non-viral vesicle contaminants, and by, as we've seen, by, com by combining size information with the capsid status, determine if your virus is breaking down at any points or whether it's being stored effectively after formulation. So come and find gold with Leprechaun, the unmatched lentivirus titer and characterization tool, which can give you lentiviral titer, capsid detection, aggregation status, and contaminant analysis in a single run. And with that, I'll pass back to our moderator, Kevin, and we can answer any questions that you might have. All right. Well, thank you, Alex, for introducing us to Leprechaun and its consumable balloony and showing us how they can size particles to sort out individual lentiviruses from aggregates and use fluorescent antibodies to confirm how many of those lentiviruses have a capsid, uh, if there's contamination from soluble P24, uh, and if EVs are sneaking around. Uh, so we have some great questions that have already been submitted, and you can still ask a question by entering it in the Q&A section of your Zoom navigation bar. So first up, uh, you showed the linear range of the viral titer. Uh, what are the linear ranges of the other outputs, for example, the soluble P24? Uh, good question. So yeah, the linear range of the viral titer, as we said, is between 5 times 10 to the 6 and 5 times 10 to the 8 particles per mil. That is the same for the EV contaminants, so they have the same dynamic range. Soluble P24 uh, is linear between 5 and uh, 10,000 picograms per mil, and viral P24 is linear between 500 and 50,000 picograms per mil. Wow, okay, very broad range there. Uh, let's see, how does cellular debris from crude unfiltered samples affect the readout? Or you could rephrase that to ask, does it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, great question. So obviously one of the key aspects of Leprechaun is the immunocapture on the loony, which we spoke about in detail. Um, so as part of this sample prep process, after we incubate our sample on the loony and capture our particles, we then have several wash stages to remove any non-specifically bound particles. So if there are large aggregates or any, any particle that isn't VSPG, P24 or tetraspanin positive, it will be washed away and removed um, during those wash steps. Uh, so it doesn't have any impact on the quantification of any of the outputs that we've spoken about. Okay. Um, and speaking of wash steps, is there a way to automate the sample and loony prep? Uh, yeah, so the Leprechaun comes with the loony washer, which is a plate washer specifically designed to handle up to 24 loonies at once. So that allows you to do hands-off sample prep. Uh, it will automate all of the washing, steps and the drying steps and get your loonies ready to run on Leprechaun. Okay. Uh, can lentivirus pseudotypes other than VSVG be analyzed on Leprechaun? So the uh, lentivirus kit that we have spoken about today is specifically designed and optimized for the VSVG pseudotype. Um, we do have 
other linear designs that may open up the possibility to look at other pseudotypes. Uh, so my, my suggestion would be if you are working on a non-BSPG pseudotype lentivirus, you know, come get in contact with us and we can have a conversation and we can figure out uh, how a leprechaun might, might work for you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to combine two here. Uh, there's one question on how is the sizing done by Leprechaun and another one that says, uh, we already have a stunner, how does this technique differ? So it's kind of both talking about sizing. Uh, okay, yeah, great, great, good question. So for those of you that might not be familiar with stunner, uh, that is um, another one of our awesome Unchained Labs products and that um, works via DLS and UV -vis. Um, So that has a different um, sizing technique to Leprechaun. So Leprechaun is using single particle uh, interferometry. So this is a single particle technique to determine size. We can size any particle between 35 nanometers and 200 nanometers in diameter. Um, and basically, without going into all the physics of it, essentially we're looking at the interference of light from the surface of the loony with the particle that's bound on top. And based off that interference, we can, we can calculate what the diameter of that bound particle is. Okay. Uh, is the software part 21 CFR part 11 compliant and are we open to site demos? So two part question. Uh, so first question, yes, obviously open to demos. So um, you know, please, if you want a demo, um, please get in contact. We're happy to, to come out and visit you and show you Leprechaun um, in the field. Uh, in terms of the software, uh, it's not currently CFR 21 part 11 compliance. You know, that, that's something we can look at going forward, but not, not us today. Yeah, so it's usually part of the, the life cycle of products at Unchained Labs. Mm -hmm. Not right now, but usually part of the life cycle. Uh, how many different loonies can you run in the Leprechaun in a single run? So you can run up to 16. So uh, you can load 16 at one go, and then it will automatically analyze all of those 16 for you. Okay. And there's a few questions here that focus on the P24 aspect of this assay. Um, so let's start with, can you just briefly revisit uh, how Leprechaun is, is visualizing the P24 protein uh, in both free and intact, uh, both freely soluble and intact lentivirus P24? Yeah, so for the intact lentivirus, um, you know, we're capturing it on the BSPG capture spot. Then once that, that particle is bound, we do um, a gentle fixation and permeabilization just to allow access for the fluorescent P24 antibody to get inside the virus and be able to access the capsid. So um, then we will see if the fluorescent or red P24 antibody binds, we can see that co-localization with the VSPG and we can quantify that as a capsid containing particle. For the soluble P24, we have the separate set of capture spots. Um, that will bind P24 that is not encased in the membrane or is just free in solution. Um, and then again, that is also treated with the same red fluorescent P24 antibody. So then we get counter staining of that soluble P24 on the red spot. And we can then use the intensity of that staining on the P24 spot to convert it into the concentration of um, P24 in terms of picograms per mil. So that's previously been calibrated against a set of P24 standards. So we know exactly how intensity from our loony converts into um, quantity of P24. And yeah, that, that actually kind of dovetails nicely into the last uh, set of two questions here, which is um, sort of comparing contrasting P24 ELISA results with Leprechaun. There's answers about, or questions about uh, total titer. There's questions about variation and precision. Um, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so in terms of total titer, I think what, what, what you often see on a P24 ELISA I mean, if you're looking at the crude sample, then most of the P24 there is probably virally, was probably virally encapsulated. Um, anything other than a crude sample, obviously you're quite, you essentially have two populations. You've lysed your sample, but you can no longer distinguish between the soluble P24 and what was previously inside the virus. So if you compare an ELISA result to Leprechaun, what you would normally see is that if it's a less purified or non, you know, if it's not a completely purified sample, the soluble P24 read-off from Leprechaun and the viral P24 read-off from Leprechaun, because we do give both, um, the picograms per mil of that will, will normally be very close to the, peak, the total picograms per mil that you get from the P24 ELISA. 
So we're seeing the same total P24, we're just able to separate it out into whether it's viral titer or P20 or soluble P24. Okay, and then um, I think people probably are used to their in-house uh, P24 ELISAs in terms of precision. What kind of precision would you see from Leprechaun typically? Um, it's, so it's in a similar spectrum to the P24 ELISA. Um, in terms of the exact CVs, I probably need to confirm that. But um, yeah, it's in the range of the, of the P24 ELISA. Yeah, I think there was the one slide that was interesting where I think we were looking at 8% um, CV across. Yeah, in terms of reproducibility, well. it, interrun, intrarun uh, reproducibility, it's, it's certainly um, below 8%. Okay. Uh, and then uh, there's one question. We will be sharing this recorded presentation, so that's logistics. I'm happy to handle that one. Um, and then a lot of the other ones, I think we'll, we'll follow up uh, individually. Um, so you know, I'll say thank you very much to Alex for you know, all this great presentation and thanks to our audience for all those uh, great questions. Uh, thanks everyone who joined us live today. If you'd like to have a deeper conversation with our team, please do get in touch with us at info at unchainlabs.com uh, or learn more from our website, unchainlabs.com. Uh, we would love to connect with you and talk science. And we'll definitely follow up with uh, any other questions we didn't get to live today. Thank you for attending our virtual seminar and I hope you have a great rest of your day.